In this video, Trey is going to have a look at a deeper dive into the stochastics formula so we can better understand what it really means when we get overbought or oversold conditions on our charts. Stay tuned. Hey guys, warm welcome to you. All right, so I think it's time that we drill down into a little bit more of the formulas behind the indicators because there's a danger, and I found myself falling into this trap before years ago, where you just go, and the indicator says this, I'm not really understanding what is the indicator actually telling me. And sometimes it pays dividends so actually look at the formula and work out exactly how it would adjust your indicator based on different conditions. And then you can start to think about when the formula or the indicator is useful and when it's not. Now moving average is very simple guys, you know, we just take an average of 20 day, whatever period we've got, and that's just plotted there. So every hour time updates, we understand the average is pretty easy. When we get to things like stochastics, it's not so obvious unless you dig around exactly what happens. Now we know that very often on our chart, we can be overbought for a long period of time, we can be oversold for a long period of time, and often we get kind of overbought, oversold conditions back and forth. And we know that we can guide us sometimes in a trending environment, on the first kind of counter trend move, we get an oversold condition, first oversold condition, guides us well in a range bound market where we're selling overbought, we're buying oversold. And obviously in trending markets as well, guys, you know, when we go overbought and we're in a really aggressive trending movement, we can still be buying in overbought conditions as long as we're in a trending environment because we know that it's irrelevant, you know, the situation. So let's look at the formula and let's kind of think about how it fits in with your strategy, how it fits in with the way that you look at the market. Because I think sometimes this is the key, guys. I can't emphasize enough how that's helped me so much over the years, spinning my wheels the first few years, you know, just not thinking about it. And then kind of as you come through and you, you start to think more, you know, about who's on the side of the price, you know, what's supply and demand all about. And you just think a little bit deeper into the markets, a little bit of a different angle, things just become a lot clearer. And so this is kind of part of the process, if you like. Yes, it's not quite the same as something in the program where we're talking about, you know, who the other side of the trade is, the supply and demand imbalance, and all this kind of stuff, and how to think about price. But this is still the same theory. We're thinking about what this indicator is actually telling us. So let's have a look at the indicator, guys. So percentage K, percentage D. We know the rules now. Obviously, we have different settings and stuff, but generally speaking, we're going to say we're on a default setting, which is 14 period. That's what most people have a stochastic on. Um, and they'll set their percentage D to something like three. And there's other settings as well, like smoothing. But the big one is the percentage K number. And that's kind of the uh, the benchmark, if you like, that others are, are then um, kind of calculated off. Because you've got generally you've got two lines, haven't you? A fast and a slow, and they're crossing and stuff. Forget about that for now. We've got percentage K. So the percentage K is this. It's the close or the current price minus the low 14 days ago. So the 40, the lowest period we have over 14 days. Okay, so you, you, well, we will have to explain that any further. And then uh, on the bottom here, we've got the high minus the low. So the range over the past 14 days. So you can already see now what we're doing is we're just looking at a 14 day period. Now, obviously it makes sense because that's the period we've got in. Uh, and, just, and that's times by 100, that form is by 100. Just as a point of, um, Reference guys, the percentage D is a three period moving average of the percentage K. So it's just a moving average of what we get out here, but forget about that for now. And again, whatever setting you've got, this is the important thing, this is what influencing things. So if you start to think about what this is telling us, it's basically saying, okay, if we're at the low for the past 14 days, we are gonna get a reading up here, really, really low number here, that's gonna really kind of influence this and it could be like zero, right? Because if this is zero, whatever we've got times zero, we've got a, times 100, we're gonna get zero. So that's seriously oversold. So we're gonna get the most oversold condition ever if we are at the low or the lowest point we've been for the past 14 days. It's as simple as that because that number's gonna come out of zero, right? Let's say that number is a 100, for example. Let's say our low there uh, is 100. Our current price is 100. 100 minus 100 is zero. It doesn't matter what that is, times 100 is zero. And similarly as well, you know, the highest point we can get up to be 100 would be if whatever we get here is times by the 100 is one. So in other words, what we do is if we are the high of the range, in other words, if this number here is equals that number there, what does that equal? That equals one. So if you imagine if our high, uh, let's scrub that, if our high was 100, our low was 50, we're currently 100, we're gonna get one here, which is gonna give us 100. So now we can see our extremes, our overbought conditions and our oversold conditions. But what does that tell us? And obviously there's gonna be bits in between. If we're in the midpoint, the midpoint of the range of the past 14 days, 
then we're going to be right in the middle of stochastic. It's going to give us about a 50 period reading. Now, what is that telling us? So that's telling us already showing us some of the power and some of the weakness of the stochastic. Obviously, just taking 14 days, we've got to make a choice of how long, what point period to look back. But let's say 14 days. If we're at the high of 14 days and it's been sitting around in not much of a range, but you suddenly have to be at the high, you're going to get a massive 100 reading. And then if you're trending up and up and up every day after that, it's going to be seriously overbought, right? Because you're going to be at the highest point every Every single day after. So let's say it breaks out of a range. Let's say you've got 14 days of range and it breaks out, it breaks out, and it's just chugging. Even if it's slow, it's going to read overbought. But then you know you start to think, well, is it really overbought? We're just starting to get going. So that's some kind of the vulnerability of the stochastic. Now, if you're in the range and you can't back back into the range, you're going to literally have this oscillating between 0 and 100, which is where it works very, very well because it's giving you a visual representation. It's normalizing it for 100 at max, a zero for the min. And you can kind of see where it's going. So even if it stretches out the range for a little bit and then curls back in, that's still going to reset the stochastic to the 100 point and then come back down again. So you start to see how it will adjust and reflect. But one thing to point out, guys, is that, you know, if you imagine this scenario here and again, always be mindful of my charts, drawing my skills uh, for drawing charts, fortunately, aren't quite as good as my trading. But this we ignore because we don't know what we've got yet. So this is our first 14th candle. So now we're looking back and we're saying, OK, well, actually, here's our close here. We're almost at high. So we're going to have a stochastic whatever percentage that is of the move. So it's at 50. It might be like a 60, 65 reading. OK, so we almost overbought. Now, when we start getting to here and we're looking back 14 days, a high is still there, but we're now at a new high. So we're going to get a massive overbought reading. And you think, well, OK, potentially that's true. But is it really overbought? Yes, we're in the situation of a range. And then you get overbought, overbought, overbought. Now, if you imagine if we carried on here, which is where we get in situations where we stay overbought and why it becomes not so useful, because we plod on, 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 and it's overbought, 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 and everyone's saying it's overbought. But yeah, it's just starting a volatility breakout. And this thing is, could have stay overbought for the next five months. You know, that's the way volatility breakouts work. And if we start to roll back, and of course, as we get further along, now we're spreading out the range. So the stochastic is going to be a little bit more dampened because if we had this range expanding, our high and our low is now a wider number. So where we are relative to that is going to change and it's not going to be so aggressive as if we were in this little range here. You can see how this formula works out. So well, how does it work when we're trending and when our first kind of pullback counter cycle trend? Well, you know, imagine if now we were pushing down to the downside, we're getting zero readings, zero readings or very, very low readings. So we just kind of tick off the low. Of course, don't forget, if we just come off the low a little bit, you know, if we've got the bigger the move over the past 14 days, the more off the low we've got to come to get off that oversold condition. The smaller the move, it takes a long period of time. There's a very shallow range over the 14 days and we pop off a little bit then that's going to make the stochastic change massively. If it's a very steep angle, we've got a big range there altering that formula and we pop off it a little bit. It's not going to change it much. So that's where it's quite nice. Because it's, it's kind of adjusting for the strength of the trend and the range of the move. So now we come down, we pop off a little bit, we get the first kind of overbought condition, and that really is, is adjusted for the size and the strength of the trend. And then very often we get that continuation and rollback as we know uh, and love. So anyway, guys, you know, not to go into massive depth with this, but I just kind of really wanted to you know, look at the formula for number one. And number two, uh, you know, let's think about uh, how this actually affects our signals if we're using something like this. It doesn't have to be a stochastic you're using, could be any kind of indicator out there, but understanding you know, what the formula does and how it affects on different markets sometimes then makes you think, okay, well, it's really just giving me a useless reading at the moment because of the current the last 10 days has been completely meaningless. And so the reading is completely skewed. It can be ignored. And so that's mindful for discretionary traders, but also for system traders, you know, overbought and oversold, doesn't necessarily mean anything if we can't quantify, qualify what's happened before and say, hey, the stochastic's useless now for the next nine days, or now we're listening to it, or now we're not. So uh, something to think about, guys, anyway. Stochastic formula, a bit of a deeper dive. Uh, whatever you're doing, take care, keep the risk managed, whatever trade you're making, whatever time frame you're trading. And by the way, if you're subscribed to the channel, appreciate your support. If you're not, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.